I'm Mike Stanton. It's October 30th, the end of the uh, month. We're here for the BAM Weekly Update. I'm here with Grant Dewey and David Yoon from BAM's Capital Markets Desk. Thank you for joining me, gentlemen. Uh, Grant, this was kind of the last hurrah for uh, Muni New Issue Volume for a little while, at least. It was another heavy week. Uh, we're told to expect a, a slowdown in November. Uh, what kind of conditions did issuers face as they uh, they brought new deals in? Uh, you know, surprisingly, the 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 market remains you know uh, pretty pretty darn resilient. You've got uh, you know there's been a lot of taxable issuance, so we continue to see inflows into the uh, mutual funds. But the fact that 25 30 percent is is in the, uh, the taxable market and and generally a different uh, class of investors, uh, the uh, you know the the muni volume has not overwhelmed. So. While munis have underperformed a little bit um, this week, there's still uh, uh, high grade uh, AAA MMD is a little bit lower for the week. And so there's been, you know, there, there has been good strength. You had this morning, third quarter GDP jumped uh, 33%, uh, 33.1% on an annualized basis. And, and uh, you know, uh, we also saw personal consumption numbers uh, increase, initial jobless claim declined, uh, you know, more than forecasted. And so I think there's been a tendency to underestimate the rebound in the economy and, and the numbers, uh, again, reflected it. Um, I'd say the only pending home sales are probably the only disappointment as they fell 2.2%, but they have been, housing has been a bright spot in the economy. We did, um, you know, while the numbers pointed to a strong recovery, the market reaction was surprising. We, we Stocks sold off uh, 200 points or so. Out of the shoot, treasuries were mostly unchanged. Um, and so clearly the recent surge in coronavirus cases, I think, had people looking more focused to Q4 issuance-wise. MTA came to market today with a deal, $260 million via a syndicate with J.P. Morgan. Uh, they also announced that they're going to be tapping the remainder of their MLF um, uh, 2.9 billion. Uh, so they are, you know, um, certainly getting liquidity from any and all sources. Uh, and uh, and finally, as David will get into, demand for bond insurance remains very strong. The Wall Street Journal ran uh, a recent article talking about kind of um, you know for investors highlighting value preservation. I think uh, also highlighting uh, some of the savings that issuers have been uh, seeing the use of bond insurance. And, and, uh, and then finally, S&P had comments about sort of the capital um, uh, adequacy and, uh, and financial stability of, of BAM uh, to cover any potential losses. So all in all, uh, a good, good week for the market, a good week for bond insurance. And David, I've gone over my time, so uh, please uh, give us the details. Before we jump into that, David, just to yeah. remind viewers at home, of course, uh, you can uh, visit BAM on social media, BAM's LinkedIn page and Twitter page, both feature links to that Wall Street Journal article, uh, so you can catch up on that information there. Uh, David, let's uh, switch over to you and talk about the new issue market. What stood out to you? Yeah, so, uh, you know, as you mentioned, another heavy week. Uh, this week, Muni Supply came in at about $19 billion, um, and kind of as Grant mentioned, um, a good chunk of that we continue to see as taxable. Um, so we saw about five billion of uh, the 19 billion come in as taxable this week. Um, we kind of expect to see that, um, you know, more of the same going forward. Um, you know, while you know you mentioned that last week we had a record-setting week, um, you know, in terms of BAM insured par, tough to follow that up. But um, we did have a really, uh, you know, a really good week this week, insuring 40 new issues for a total par of 440 million dollars. Um, just kind of taking a closer look at some of those deals, um, there was an $89 million Lake Worth Beach, Florida utility transaction that Morgan Stanley priced. Um, another noteworthy one is a $55 million AA minus rated Wichita, Kansas utility transaction with Piper as the underwriter. And, you know, the issuer barred under the state of Kansas state revolving fund loan program for its overall capital improvement plan. Um, so we're happy to be on that deal. And lastly, a $34 million Marysville Joint Unified School District lease deal in California that DA Davidson priced. And I think there were five or six uh, new Green Star transactions as well. Green Bond Market and Muni's continues to be vibrant. Uh, already hit a, uh, a full year record just through the first three quarters. And so uh, keeps uh, building on that uh, on that. Uh, 
pace. Uh, shift gears to next week, as we mentioned, the calendar is much lighter. Uh, the national election setting up on Tuesday. I think people uh, putting a, a pause on some of their uh, transactions. We heard the bond buyer held its California Public Finance Conference virtually, of course, uh, this week. Uh, Robert Spangler, head of public finance at RBC, said that, uh, and all of the panelists, Peter Hill from UBS, Gary Hall from Siebert, were all in agreement that uh, the month of November is probably going to be relatively quiet on the calendar, but then uh, the supply picture uh, picks up quite a bit. So let's talk about uh, in the short term, what, uh, what are you looking at? Yeah, so uh, kind of looking ahead to next week's calendar, you know, as you mentioned, and as you know, many people know, we have the election just around the corner. So, so far we're seeing just about $600 million of supply, obviously well below, um, you know, what we've been seeing in the past, but that's obviously because of the election, kind of the uncertainty around that. Um, a lot of the feedback that we've received from underwriters is that, you know, they're obviously kind of on hold and we'll, we'll wait to see um, how the election plays out. So, um, you know, we expect a very light week for both kind of the general market and them. You know, I think from Rye last week coming out with a, a big forecast for volume in 2021. He sure did. He was calling for 550 billion. And uh, I noticed today another large uh, dealer came out uh, actually expecting to see less volume next year. They, they predicted that 2020 would end up around 450 billion, and they're actually calling for less volume. So uh, it is a bit of a guessing game. I mean, it always is, and especially ahead of a, a, an election. Uh, I think if you saw a blue wave, uh, I think a lot of people feel like uh, that would lead to a bigger calendar. So there's a lot of nuances. I think it's a tricky business to start um, projecting volume uh, just ahead of the election. Okay, but a lot to watch for in the next five days, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you here next week and uh, talk about it then. Great, thanks, Mike. Thanks, thanks. Mike. When the market is unpredictable, bam gives you certainty. In the face of market volatility and illiquidity, BAM-insured municipal bonds deliver default protection, value preservation, and a durable AA rating from S&P. BAM's insurance protects against everything that causes a default, and adding BAM-insured municipal bonds to your portfolio is easy. Talk to your investment advisor, visit buildamerica.com, or look for BAM-eligible bonds on the Perform Portfolio Management System. BAM. Build America Mutual.